Hey everybody, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here and we're back on the 32 today. I think our plan for this video is going to be, we're gonna blow, start blowing it apart for paint. But before we do that, we got a full house to deal with here. So naturally when you blow a car apart for paint, they get way bigger, they take up way more space. I actually have a rotisserie out in the trailer that I'd like to put the frame on just because it makes it so much easier to body work and paint it. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is empty the shop out. Gord's 32 Roadster is ready to go home. So we're gonna load it up on the truck and trailer and take it out to his place. He lives probably about 20 minutes from here. And then when this is out of here, we can shuffle all this stuff around. Aaron's 33 Ford pickup is basically at the point where it is ready to blow apart for final welding. And then it can go off to the body shop to get sprayed. So we got to keep in mind that we're going to have one and two cars getting blown apart. So on that note, let's get to it. Fire up brown sugar, hook onto the trailer, and load Gordy's car up. Just dropped off Gordy's car, got a bag of tacos. So now we'll head back to the shop. Back at the shop now, I unhooked the flat deck and hooked onto the enclosed trailer. Now, if you guys remember this from when we went to Bonneville, but this is the trailer that we hauled the Roadster down in and camped in the front of. When we're not at Bonneville, it is a storage trailer. There's the 390 that came out of the truck. There's an LS for a future project. There's a, uh, what's four speed is that? Four speed, four speed transmission. Uh, and yeah, there's the rotisserie. So we're gonna get that out, bring it inside and then start putting the 32 chassis on it. Super T10 four speed, took a minute. For those curious from the last video when we put the mud flaps on the truck, these Hayes mud flaps, Here's how they sit with the car trailer on. Just perfect. Can slide my fingers under there. This is exactly what I want. That was some pretty good icrometer work.
Well, it kind of feels similar to a few months ago when this thing was all orange and we blew it apart. Except I think it was facing the other direction then. I don't know. I can't remember. I know I was a little more excited about it then. Uh, I should be excited about taking this apart to paint it, but I'm kind of stressing about all the stuff that's not quite ready yet. Like I still haven't got the front shocks fit. And the fender braces, we might have to modify them to make them fit. And I haven't finished the firewall feet yet. So there's, you know, a bunch of little things that are all bugging me, like those should be done first. But I don't have the fender braces yet. I'll get those next month. I'm picking them up from my friend Bruce when I go down to the swap meet by his place. So I'll grab those then. And I don't want to wait around for them either. I want to keep this project going. So that's why we're just going to not worry about that. We'll blow it apart. We'll start painting it. I need the, the satisfaction of things like going together for the final time to keep my motivation up in this. I know some people, you know, they get everything spot on the first time before they move on. And sometimes I can do that, but in this situation I can't. And I don't want this project to stall out. So we're gonna ignore those little things for now and keep moving forward with the exciting stuff. We can always go back later. It's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, fitting the firewall. If the frame is painted at that point, we just gotta be a little bit more careful, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, you just watched us pull Gordy's 32 Roadster apart and put a completely different engine and transmission in it and put it all back together. And that was a fully painted car when it showed up here. So, you know, a little bit of masking tape and some patience and you can do a lot. So on that note, Let's uh, probably pull the firewall and the rad off, get the engine out, and then pull the front suspension out and the rear suspension out. Not quite sure where I'm gonna put the suspension yet. Last time when it was all still orange, I just put it outside. But now it's kinda, you know, it's nice and clean. And I wouldn't say sanded, but it's cleaned up enough that I don't wanna put it back outside because it's still the rainy season here. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put it yet. We'll figure that out later. If it does go outside, I mean, it's fine. It's been outside before. It's gonna be outside when the car is done. So we'll, uh, once again, not worry about that at this point. Let's just start making some progress. Some progress by some taking it apart more. <laughs> All right. Man, they just never stop dripping, do they? Well, believe it or not, that was an entire day. So I think I'm gonna take Doris to the park now and then we'll pick up tomorrow morning. Good morning, it's Saturday. We're all jacked up on coffee and ready to dive into this project again. I'm excited about it, which is good, because yesterday I was kind of, and I had to force myself to get into it, but 
we're over that now and I'm stoked on it again. Our plan for this morning is I'm gonna continue taking the suspension out. Should be pretty straightforward, two bolts on the back of the wishbone, front end is out. The rear suspension, we got two U-bolts and the front wishbone, or the, the front of the rear wishbone mount, and it's out, and then we can set up the rotisserie and start mounting it. Before we jump into that, I just wanna show you quickly Canadian Hot Rods Magazine. I've been a, a contributor to Canadian Hot Rods Magazine for many years now, and do a monthly column in there. And uh, this current issue has this car and the story of how I found it, where I got it from, who I bought it from, and the whole process of getting it here. It was quite an ordeal, let me tell you that. Um, anyways, if you still appreciate print magazines, go check out CanadianHotRods.com. Great magazine, Terry's a fantastic guy, huge supporter of what I do in here, and I like to support him, so. All right, let's... Uh, Pull this front end out. So I think just like the last time we took this chassis apart a couple months back, I'm going to pull the front suspension out, roll it outside, then pick the car up like a wheelbarrow and turn it around and bring it back in. That way we don't end up with the rear suspension stuck behind everything and in the way. That was easy. Go put this thing outside now. So before I pulled this rear suspension out, I thought maybe I will start putting the rotisserie together because it's kind of at a nice working height right now. And if I take the rear end out, it's going to be sitting on the ground and then it's just that much harder to get it up here. So let's do this end right now. So the last car that was on this rotisserie was a Mustang Bob's 69 Mustang convertible and these mounted to the front frame horns. I think we're going to cut these brackets off. And there's a hole right here. So if we take this hole and put like a, I don't know, a long stud or spacer or something in there, we can probably mount this plate underneath the cross member and have it bolt on to the rad holes here. That way we can get nice even coverage with our paint on the inside and outside of here. So we'll chop that off. And that's how we'll mount the front. The back, I'm still debating. My first plan, which I think currently is still the best plan, is to just take the spreader bar out and put a piece of tubing that I don't care about across there, bolt it in place, and have that piece of tubing weld to the two points on the back of the rotisserie. Also might be able to, there's these old holes here that I think might have been from a I don't know, exhaust hanger or something. So we might be able to do the same kind of thing we did up front as well, but I don't know. So far I'm thinking this might be the best. The only thing with this is we won't be able to get paint here, but I don't know if I'm super concerned about that. The spreader bar, I mean, we can always 
blow a little bit in with a rattle can or something and the spreader bar will cover it. So it might be fine. We'll uh, keep brainstorming this idea while we're doing that end over there. I just found these two pieces of tubing in my little cutoff box. So I think I'm gonna cut this one down to the same length as this. Then I just grab some nuts here and we'll take the nuts and weld them inside like that. That way this is threaded and we can just thread a bolt in through the top of the cross member. This bottom, I was originally going to bolt it to here, but I think it's probably just as easy, easy to weld it. Welding's fun. This doesn't have to be super precise. One done. lost the other one. All right, both these are welded up. We'll set them in. Like I said, they don't have to be super precise because everything on here is adjustable. So we can just slide these back and forth until they line up where we need them to. And then once it's lined up, then we'll go in tighten all this stuff up. All right, that is, is that as low as it goes? I think that's as low as it goes. So we'll have to pick this up and set it on here. That'll be fun. I just took a tape measure and measured these are about 19 and a quarter apart. So I set these to be 19 and a quarter apart. That way it's just a little bit easier when we go to do this. I've got our bolts sitting there. I've already tested them to make sure they fit. So let's try this. Uh-oh. It's going to be tight. Oh, you know what? We can slide these further out on there. There we go. Tighten that up a little bit so it doesn't slide off. Okay, take two. I think I'll just focus on getting this side for now. Oh, no, you know what? I can't, because I have to lift them both in there. Okay, let's try that. There we go. That's better. Once I get it kind of sitting in here so it's not gonna fall apart, then we can kind of square it up a bit. The front is all squared up and cinched down. It's nice and solid now. 
So we can turn our attention to the back. We'll pull the rear suspension out. And then I've just got this hanging from the crane here. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Ideally, I'd like it a little bit further back, but we're kind of running out of space here. So I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll uh, pull the rear suspension out, lift the frame up so it's level, and then fit the rear part of the rotisserie. So in an attempt to not waste good metal building something just temporary, I found this random piece that I'm pretty sure based on the white overspray on it was in here before I moved into the building because that's the same white that the walls are painted. So if we take this and cut it to the same width as this spreader bar, these are the pieces that we just cut off the front plates from when the Mustang was on here. If we cut those down and weld them in there, cut this excess off so we just have the single bolt hole, then this end should be able to bolt in where this used to be. And we've got these bolt holes here that will line up with those bolt holes. That should be pretty easy and cost zero dollars. See what happens here. Oh yeah. So we can fine tune it from here to get a nice balance point and then you should be able to, in theory, if you can get the correct balance point, just spin it with your finger. Just like making chicken. All right, man. Rock and roll. Let's weld this thing. Just having lunch here and decided to get some liquid motivation. I don't think I like this, but I keep wanting to drink it. Well, now that lunch is over and we're back to work again, we're gonna weld these shock brackets up that we made in the, the last video on this car. Just gonna TIG weld that, TIG weld that, as well as these little spacers that I made. I think I'm gonna weld them on there as well. Just it's one less thing that you gotta fight with when you're putting shocks on. After we weld these, we can roll this thing upside down and we'll drill the bottom holes for our bump stops. And then we can take those out and obviously we'll weld the, the bottom of our shock brackets while it's upside down as well. Yeah, this is exciting.
locked in place now? Yeah. Don't feel the Frida. <laughs> I think you stood in front of the camera the whole time. Well, the time has come for this chassis. It is ready for body work and paint. So I want your opinions. Let me know in the comments what you would do with this. As of right now, I'm leaning towards doing a bunch of body filler work on where we spliced everything together. There's some heavy pits in here, so probably maybe give it a skim of putty to fill in all those heavy pits. Then we'll epoxy it and slick sand it, block sand that out, prime it, seal it, and then paint it that same blue that the grill shell is. That's plan one, which I think is what I'm leaning towards. Plan B is staying realistic about this, that this car, when it's roadworthy, it won't be parked in the shop every night. It's gonna be parked outside, just like the 47 is. It's gonna be driven in all sorts of different conditions, just like the 47, rain, snow, slush, all that. Uh, also, my cars, as you guys know that, that have watched this channel before, they get driven hard. So there's gonna be all sorts of oil and road grime and stuff. With that in mind, should I just, you know, go get some, you know, a gallon of semi-gloss black and just brush paint it, call it done, never ever worry about it again if it gets rock chips or road grime or oil sprayed on it. Who cares? This is just an old hot rod after all. Or do I go with plan A and detail this and make it nice? Let me know in the comments what you think. On that note, I think we'll save whatever we do, body work or just brush paint, for the next video. Uh, it's too late in the day to start a new project. So, thanks everybody for watching. As always, make sure to check out the website, lgspeedcustom.com to get yourself a LG Speed and Custom shirt or stickers or parts, whatever you wanna buy. Every, all the support from, from the website goes right back into this. So I really appreciate it when you guys support the channel. Uh, thanks to the Switchblade Valentines for the music. Long time Victoria Psychabilly Rockabilly band. Uh, check them out on Bandcamp at Switchblade Valentines. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.